again thank the entire uh, support staff that helped uh, you know get this recruiting class finished up. Uh, there's a whole lot that goes into a class that starts way back well over a year ago and, and of course finishes up today and uh, you know without uh, Dr. Kopp and Mike Hamrick and the entire football staff and Mark Gale and just all the support staff GAs uh, it would be impossible to to accomplish what was accomplished today. Uh, I'm happy with the class. Uh, there weren't a whole lot of surprises. There were a couple guys we picked up there today that we weren't quite sure we were going to get. So we were about plus two on the day, which is unusual in this business. I'm not sure that's ever happened before. But uh, I think we, for the most part we met our needs and, uh, and we're excited about them and looking forward to, to getting them up here. Uh, a lot of them are here already and getting the rest of them up here in June. So at that point, we'll just take any questions you have. What were the major needs you were trying to fill? Well, you know, I felt going in that we had to, we had to develop some depth with the three wide outs with Luz and Booker and Tay and, and Dobson that we felt like we had to help ourselves at the wide receiver position. Uh, going into it, we would like to have gotten a couple older kids from possibly the junior college uh, ranks, but we were able to get Shawnee Kersey from Penn State. And we're also, uh, of course, Devin Smith, who's already here from Penn State, transfer. So that provided us uh, a couple older kids to go along with Josh Knight and Justin Hunt, which are a couple of high school guys. So uh, we felt like we met the need at the wide receiver position. Uh, we also wanted to get uh, develop more depth with the offensive line. We signed five of those guys. Uh, we felt like we needed that pass rusher, uh, Blackman's in the fold, which was good. And then you had a Josh Brown, who's already on campus, and Gary Thompson, and a couple of those other kids are already here. We feel like we can, uh, you know, develop some uh, pass rush there. The linebacker position was critical. Uh, Neville Hewitt uh, from Georgia Military was a good get. I uh, really like Stephon Houston that we got, and Aaron Plant's a very athletic guy. So we feel like we helped ourselves at linebacker. And if you take a look at the safety position, being able to get Taj Letman, the JUCO kid, that could give it a little older help there, and then signing Michael Johnson, uh, high school, along with uh, Taquan Lang, uh, uh, to, uh, that, that, that was huge for us. That was huge. As the season progressed and you saw what was going on with the defense, did the did, did the recruiting of the defense side become more and more priority? Or had, was it kind of the same way going throughout the season? Well, we felt going in, we knew what our needs were, and uh, you know we knew that you know with the way the you know offenses are going in, in today's world, you have to be able to create, create pass rush with your down four or down three, uh, whatever scheme you're in, and we needed you know we need some pass rushers that can get there. Without having to blitz, so we went we went hard at, hard at getting that done, along with the people we knew we already had on campus to to sure that deal up, and then at the linebacker position too, we wanted to continue to get more athletic. And with Houston, uh, with Hewitt, and then you got to throw Tareen in that mix too because he's now out there, and uh, and then you add uh, you know you had Stephon Houston, uh, Hewitt, Plant, those four guys to that mix. There's some pretty guys. There's guys there that are a little bit more physical, but also can run. And with the, the Johnson signing, I mean, you're flipping a kid that was a Florida State recruiter. This is a team that just won the Orange Bowl. As coaches and as recruiters, how I guess, I guess the word is how satisfying is that to know that all that hard work you put in to, to bring and try and bring this guy into the fold, you know, came to fruition. Well, we had you know we got great contacts at Booker T. You know, Ice Harris is a personal friend. Uh, ben Hanks, I recruited out of high schools down there, and there's we have a lot of friends in that school, and and. And Michael, I'd recruited Michael's dad way back when he was at Miami High years ago. And uh, so I had a relationship with his dad there. But, uh, you know, he's a tremendous young guy that, uh, you know, wants an opportunity to play early. And kids do things for different reasons. And uh, we were fortunate that uh, we hung in there with him. He visited, he liked it, and, uh, and he ended up signing with us. So that was, that was a good get. Now, you mentioned something just there when, in talking about, you know, I recruited his dad. Yeah, and I've, I've read stories in the past where you know other coaches are in that South Florida area said, you know, he, he's not just recruiting these kids; he's recruiting their dads, recruiting their uncles. How, you know, obviously it plays a part. How important of a part has this played in kind of in developing your um, ability to kind of really go in there and, and recruit? Well? well, relationships are everything in the recruiting business. Trust and, and relationships and. That's everything, and uh, you know, Juwan Sider's done a tremendous job down there. I mean, uh, I mean, I've got kind of, but Juwan Sider is—he's right in the middle of all that. Yeah, he, those those guys trust him, and and he's he's the reason we're being as, you know as successful as we are down there. Of course, along with our other coaches, and you know, hiring Alex Mirabal uh, from down there at FIU—that he was a high school coach in that area for years—that just increases our 
you know, our trust from those coaches down there. So we've got great relationships in that South Florida area. And uh, of course, Cato and Shuler are coming here and having the kind of success that they've had and some of those other South Florida kids, it only helps us in that area. Well, you know, to be honest with you, you know, I was nervous at, at one point because when you lose, and it's happened to us every year, it's been, this is the only year we've had turnover. And, you know, Florida State was a little bit in the same boat. They lost six guys and were able to secure. I, and again, it's all about relationships. It's all about, that's why I think it's so important that the head coach is involved with every kid, you know, and not just two weeks prior to signing dates. You better have a relationship with that kid from day one because if that happens, you better be in the position to go in there and get it done. And, uh, but you know what, you know, the Juwan, Jared Parker, J.C. Price, Bill Legg, um, and Todd Hartley did a tremendous job with, with those kids. I mean, Todd Hartley had a kid from Georgia, a Selby kid that was offered by Georgia Tech three days ago and uh, told Chan Gailey, no, he's going to Marshall. So that was all because of that relationship that Todd Hartley had with that family. He had his, he had his arms wrapped around everybody in that, in that family that made, helped make that decision, and we were able to hang on. So. You know, you, I can't give those guys enough credit. You know, those those five guys that were here and and did the bulk of the recruiting. And then, of course, Chuck Heater coming in helped us with uh, Taquan Lang and a couple. He had recruited and coached a mod black who knew Taquan Lang's dad, and it all goes back to a lot of relationships way back. And then, of course, Alex Mirabal helped us with with uh, the big offensive tackle out of Boyd Anderson that was committed to Alex and FIU at one time. So there's a lot of a lot of things that go into it that are kind of unnoticed that are the reason kids make decisions. But again, I can't say enough about, you know, the coaches, uh, all the coaches that are here that, that got it done and also, again, the support staff at, uh, with Mark from Mark Gale to Tara to Dr. Cobb. Mike Hamrick met with every kid, and uh, it's sure a team effort. Without those guys, we got no chance. Bobby, do you believe those, those recruiting rankings, which, you know, are subjective, but it would have you number one in the new conference USA and maybe second in the old conference USA. What's it say about what you're doing on the well, you know, I don't know what it means. I mean, it means evidently it means you recruit people. People think they're pretty good players. I mean, I'd rather be number one than number ten. So I guess, uh, I guess that's you know, that means that, you know, a lot of it. I think it means we're on the right kids and we're getting the right kids. But what counts is what happens when they get here and step on that field. And uh, you know, we'll have a meeting tomorrow morning early, and it's you know, we got them all signed. Now we got to get them. You know, got to make sure that. The important thing about this class, and our, kid, our coaches have always done a great job, is when we, when we start in August, they're all on campus. And when school starts, they're all here. And, uh, for, for, and that's, that's happened over the years. And, and that's our job now is to make sure that uh, the kids that we have got signed letter of intents, that they're here in June. And then, of course, when school starts, they're all here. So uh, our coaches will do a tremendous job with that. They always have. You feel the balance of your staff. It, it, it's sort of an intriguing dynamic. And you've got yourself, Coach Legg, and, and Coach Heater now. All 25 plus, 30 years plus experience, but then you've got those young guys that can also relate to the players with Juwan and, and Parker and those guys. Is that is that a balance for you? All well, I, think, I, I think you need a good balance. You know, I, I don't. I think old guys can relate to players too. You know, I mean, you know, I mean that's uh, you know Chuck has been relating to, to players for a long time, and you know it's all about again, yeah. But to answer your question, you know, Juwan and Jared Parker and Todd Hartley and uh, J C Price. You know, uh, you know, JC went in there to Fork Union and got that Houston kid out of there that, that was at Maryland signing a year ago that, you know, we project to qualify, it's going to be fine. We did a tremendous job with him. You know, with Arnold Blackman, JC did a tremendous job and getting McManus here. And, you know, it was, a, again, they've all, you know, and again, there's no secrets. I mean, it's all about relationships, but also about hard work and outworking people. And, and those five guys that were here and then with Chuck coming on board and, and uh, Alex, and that, that's all, you know, it's all been good. Speaking of the, you know, what Stefan, you're projecting to, to qualify, of the 12 guys that you have in the school right now, how many do you think do you think will be on the field in spring? Uh, probably 10 of them, I would guess. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I'm, I think I'm following you right there now. You know, the Corey Tindles, the Tureens, the yeah. Stefan yeah. Houston's, yeah, those guys, uh, you know, um, uh, Tyler Combs, mm -hmm. all those guys, except for just a couple of them, I would guess they'll all be on the field. Could you talk about the offensive line that you signed a little bit? What you see there? Yeah, you know, I like uh, Jack. You know, uh, you know the, the Sandsley kid, the big Sandsley kid is he's a he's. I don't know if any of y'all saw him when he was here. He's he's a man now. He's he's uh, 
he's about as athletic big kid as I've ever been. He's got the biggest hands I've ever seen in my life. But he's Alex Mirabal had him in camp for three years, and uh, he's a big athletic kid that is neither but his family neither parents speak English. It's a kind of a neat situation. The kid's done a great job, uh, and there were some things about him not being eligible. He's a great student. I mean, he's a smart kid that'll be fine test wise. He's already got the test. But he's a guy that Alex had in camp, had a great relationship with Alex. He was committed to FIU at one time. And then when Alex and that staff uh, was let go down there with Mario, he uh, decommitted and ended up coming here. A lot of it because of Alex was here. So he's a tremendously talented kid that uh, has got a big upside. Uh, Cody Collins, uh, really excited about him. He's got great toughness. Uh, he brings a lot to the table as far as he went out in an all-star game and, and played out in one of those deals somewhere and just did a, did a tremendous job. Uh, Michael Selby is the guy I talked about that, came, that the Georgia Tech came in late on, offered about three days ago. Extremely tough kid, loves football. All three of those kids are, are physically tough kids that bring a lot of that toughness to the room. Uh, of course, Tyler Combs is here. Uh, I've had him the last, had him at 5.30 this morning in the mat drill. I like what he's all about. He's, he's a tough kid that goes hard, and uh, he'll be fine. And then uh, Chris Hewn's a guy that was committed to Western uh, Kentucky uh, with Petrino and that bunch, and uh, we were able to go in there and get him decommitted and come to us. But he's a big, physical kid that's a that's a man. So I like I like that group. And you know, offensive linemen are you know normally it's they they have a hard time playing early. But you know, Selby especially uh, Cody Collins is Cody Collins is 295 pounds is physically strong. It came from a great program. So you know, some of those guys may have the opportunity to come in and play. But I like all five of them. And I think they're going to give us the kind of depth and and uh, athleticism and toughness that we want from that position. How about the right kick, Is he? Yeah, he's, he's in the mix there, too. Yeah, I, mean, I, left, I, mean, I don't have it read, but he's, you know, he's, we've signed Gerald Wright, and he's in the same mix there. He's in the same, same boat. Coach, when you talk about your linemen, you always talk about you want to get guys that love to play offensive line, mm -hmm. love, love to play football. How do you evaluate those kinds of intangibles? Does that jump out to you on film, or is it sitting down and talking? Well, I think you know, there's, a lot, there's a lot of different ways as far as evaluation goes, and, and the best way to evaluate is when you have him in camp. You know, we actually can coach him in camp and get around him. And, you know, uh, Sansley was one of those guys that Alex, of course, had in camp. Cody Collins we had down here several times. But it's all about, you know, it's, it's a film as part of the evaluation, talking to the high school coach is part of it, uh, any other coach that's in the program that you know and trust. So you find out as much as you can about those kids. And, uh, you know, we, we're, we're, we actually, you know, we're allowed six contacts that we're either in the homes or in the schools, and we take all six, you know, to every kid. And uh, so there's the offensive line coaches involved and the recruiting coach, myself, and there's a lot of evaluation that goes into it. And, uh, you know, we again, we feel really good, you know, about all those kids. Doc, you had four guys in the Super Bowl. Were you able to use that to your advantage? Every, every opportunity we got, yeah. Every, every conversation ended with that for the last two weeks. But uh, that's good. I mean, it's great exposure for us and uh, to be able to – you know, kids, kids, they all have dreams. You know, they all have dreams of playing in the NFL, and that's a good thing. You know, and I recruit those kids. You know, I always tell them I got, I want, I want two things. My, my job as a head coach is to make sure that four years down the road, you walk out of Marshall University with a college degree in that hand and an NFL contract in that one. That, that's my dream for them, and that's the dream they all should have. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say, you know what, Doc, you shouldn't talk like that. But I say, yeah, I want guys, I have extremely high expectations. And extremely high standards, and I want to surround myself with kids that have those same dreams, the same expectations, and same standards. And for them to be able to turn that thing on, that TV on for Super Bowl, and see those four kids playing, they realize that they can read that they can reach that. It helps them realize that they can reach that dream of playing the NFL right there at Marshall University. And and uh, I think we were the second most had the most, second most uh, players than any team in the Super Bowl. So we used that every chance we got, and we used a lot to be honest. We were talking a little bit earlier about the, the linemen whose parents work fluent in English, and I'm sure you've probably come up against that before in your, you know, on the recruiting trip. What, what does that do to kind of, I don't know if the word's complicate, but kind of throw a little monkey wrench, just like, all right, I want this kid, and I want to try and, you know, impress upon the parents how, how, how good we are, but there's that language barrier. Yeah, well, you know, we had, what we had to do in this case is we had to find somebody that spoke Creole. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and Alex, you know, found uh, we found somebody at the, at the school there that, that spoke Creole, and, and so we did the home appointment. And Alex sat in there with somebody that spoke Creole and, and got it done. So there's, if there's a will, there's a way. I wasn't smart enough to figure Creole out, so we had to find an interpreter. So 
It's uh, that's it's 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 a, it's a challenge sometimes because you're you're getting into more and more. It's, it's amazing the Haitian kids and the and the kids that are that are by, you know, speak different languages that you're running into that more and more They're because of becoming good players. This, this isn't anything new, but can you talk a little bit about you know, Marshall's ability to take kids that don't project as qualifiers? Well, you know, that's, you know, it's, um, we, we do, a, we try to do a, our homework more so on guys that um, possibly may not make it, and we don't do a lot of that, but we do some. That's a great advantage for us. Uh, we've had great success with that. Vinny Curry is a perfect example. Uh, Vinny Curry was honored at last Saturday's basketball game as the Scholar Athlete of the Year. And uh, that carries a whole lot of weight with us when we're going into homes and presenting that to kids in that situation because Marshall provides them with an opportunity to get an education, which is the most important thing. And I tell you, it bothers me a little bit what's happened with all these rules out there with the NCAA and all right now because they're taking opportunities away from kids that need it the most. I mean, to deny Vinny Curry a chance to get an education was a crime because uh, he showed that he can get it done. Uh, he'll be a great ambassador for this university. He's going to be very successful in life because of what Marshall provided him. So in my mind, it's a great opportunity. I, I love the opportunity to be able to go out and take three Vinnie Currys or four Vinnie Currys a year, provide them with an opportunity and see them walk out of here four years down the road with a college degree. You probably, I probably, as a coach, get more satisfaction out of that than seeing him get drafted by the Eagles. So. Um, you know, we were, Mike Hamrick is, is, and Dr. Kopp have, have, have given us the ability to do that, and those kids have done a very good job for us. Coach, is this as comfortable as you've been with the program since you got here with now some three recruiting classes and now looking at a pretty good uh, recruiting class coming back? Well, I think the, the, key, the key here is, Keith, I, I knew we had some issues last year when I walked out there senior day, or I knew going, that when senior day rolled around, I was going to have about four or five guys walk out there. You know, anytime you've got that, and I think I had two of them dressed that were playing, but I knew prior to the season we're gonna have we had some issues because of the number of seniors we had. You know, if you look at our classes now, from here on out, I mean, there's 20 plus in this year's class that will be seniors. If you look at our junior class, it's 23 plus, I think it is, and on down to sophomores. So, you know, we're getting to the point right now where we have 20 plus in each class, and I don't have the exact numbers. Jason's can figure that out for you, but you know, that's where you want to be. I mean, if you, you, if you walk out on that field on senior day and you've got four or five seniors out there, chances are you've got problems. And uh, we can't let that ever happen. And it won't happen here as long as I'm here again. How big did, uh, you know, the schedule was released about a week, week and a half ago. How big did that factor in with some of the Florida kids that you got having two trips there this year and, and they, they get to go back down there and play in front of their friends? Well, I know Cato and Shuler and all those guys. I didn't like it quite as much as they did. They were tickled to death. I mean, I hate. I wanted one of them to come here and us to go there once. But uh, no, it's great. I mean, it helps us with with the Michael Johnsons. It helps us with uh, you know those guys down there, the Sansleys and all those guys, because their family can actually you know come see them twice. It's pretty easy for a lot of those kids down there. So it's going to be a great recruit. It was. It has been a great recruiting tool for us, and uh, it'll continue to be that because you get to play right in their backyard. Our kids will get excited about doing that. Three years and three recruiting classes into it. How how close do you feel that you that this <coughs> roster is to the um, the personality that you want your football team? Well, I think I think uh, offensively, you know, it took us two years to get to that or three to get to the point where we want to be offensively as far as our talent level was concerned. I'm hoping with what this class and I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's going to do this. But we're going to make that same jump defensively that we made offensively you know, from 108th to 5th or whatever it was, I'd like to, and that's our goal, is to get that defense this year to, to make as much improvement as the offense did. And that's Coach Heater's goal. But uh, there's no doubt that, you know, again, I've, I've said from, from day one, I took the job, it's a personnel-driven game. And, you know, you looked out there last year and saw three freshman running backs that could play, and Cato was starting to grow up, and that offensive line started to grow up, and you got some wideouts out there that could make plays. We're starting to get that on defense now. You know, we'll start to have the kind of athletes defensively that we've got on offense. And when you get both of them, then you got a chance. And I think we're getting closer, or no doubt we're getting closer. We're better personnel-wise right now than we've ever been since I've been here, and that's a good thing. Each year of your recruiting class, there's been a freshman that's just left up and, and really uh, you know, taking control and, and sees the moment early as a true freshman. Is there anybody in, in this class that you consider, like whenever you went out to recruit, you thought this kid can make an instant impact for us right You now? know what, there's a lot of kids there's a lot of kids that are on campus right now have the best shot. You know, the Corey Tindles, the Kent Tureens, the you know, Josh Brown when he gets out there, the uh, 
you know, I just look around, you know, the Taj, Taj Lettman's on campus right now. You know, there's just so many of those kids that are, that are here right now that have a better chance. A lot of those freshmen the last couple of years or last three have played out of necessity. You know, hopefully we're getting to the point where, you know, we don't have to play, excuse me, as many freshmen, but, uh, you know, there are some talented guys. If they're going to play and play a lot, then, then they'll play. But uh, a lot of that, those freshmen you saw out there the last three years is because we had no choice, you know. And if we get to the point where we got some juniors and seniors that can, they can get it done and all those freshmen don't have to play, chances are we're going to be a better team. Has uh, Larry Jefferson left the program? He has. He's been dismissed for violation of team rules. I've been reading a couple of tweets from the players and a couple of guys in the world that I've talked to that in the, the workouts, they, they, they're exhausted, but they're impressed with the new strength coach. How, has, how do you feel he's, uh, he's been Come in and really kind of seems that they, they really, he's really jolted somebody. Yeah, he's, I, I, I love what he's all about. You know, we hit a home run with that guy. And uh, he's, uh, he's done a tremendous job. You know, he, he, he's, you know they've, they've, they've responded well. And uh, I, like, I like what's going on in the weight room. Well, you've had committed for quite some time. Your quarterback, the quarterback, mm -hmm. uh, talk about him. He had an injury during his season. Did he decide to come? Yeah, he's here now. Yes, sir. Yeah, he's here now. Did he decide to come to campus as a result of the injury, or was he shooting at all? No, no, he was always shooting to be here in January, and that's that's, that's number one. It's good for a quarterback, and but it was a it, you know it wasn't a labrum or anything like that. It was a collarbone which healed, and he should be fine. He's 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 throwing now. How much of a comfort does he have having worked with Eric Cresser and somebody that knows the Marshall and knows? The I mean, Eric's a tremendous coach and he does a great job with those kids down there so I'm sure that having the opportunity to work with Eric has been he's benefited greatly from that and you know Eric had a great year here and a great uh, you know so I'm sure he filled him in on all the great great places to go eat and whatever you need to get done but uh, I guess it was good the uh, one running back that you signed Brandon Bird was really kind of characterized as a below the radar guy what did you guys see any of the apparently I saw a very fast guy that ran about a 10, 600 meters, long jumped about 23 foot, that when he put the ball in his hands, he was really good. And uh, he's, he's a talented young guy. And he's, for, he's about 6'1", 190 pounds. So we're, we're excited about him. Well, what do you think it was that others didn't see? I don't know. I have no idea. No idea. I understand he was the first signing from that school in about seven years, D1. Is that about right? I, I don't know that. I don't know that. You can have Coach Lake, who probably, he's recruited at school. But he's, He's a talented, I mean, this kid, he's a talented guy, really is. It's more about your most comfortable number of quarterbacks? Mm, yeah, I think, you know, I think what you try to do, Doug, is I think you make a mistake if you don't take one in every class. Now, that being said, it's hard. It was hard for us. I mean, you got Cato who's just a young guy, and you got Fro who went in and played his tail off against East Carolina. And, Showed that he's got the capability of, of leading a football team. And then you got Gunnar Holcomb, who's we like a lot. And now you add this guy in there. You know, we, we need we need to take one in every class, and this this should be a year. You know that we'll have to that we can that we can get another one. But I like to take. Uh, there probably hopefully there's never a class that goes by that we don't have at least one quarterback. Because if you don't have that guy, you got no chance. You got no chance. All good? Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. <laughs>